I didn't even know it was Stephanie. You know, I did not know it was Stephanie. That's cool. Um, Hi, I'm Kristen Maldonado from Pop Culture Planet. It's great to see you both again after last year. Um, you crushed it last like, night. You said. I eat it. Yeah, Stop. you sound great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Find me for season two. No. <laughs> um, but um, you guys, this music is incredible. The show is so much fun. I'd love to start off um, hearing about the relationship between Charlie and Baggy um, and kind of what we can expect over the course of this season. Baggy's Charlie's like absolute number one supporter, fully committed to every dream and desire that Charlie has. The main one being rehabbing demons at the Hasbin Hotel. Um, <laughs> but I think like she's also trying to balance her own realistic, grounded worldview with Charlie's rose colored glasses. Everyone can be redeemed sort of ideas. Um, and they're very, very deeply in love. The two of them are 100% for each other. You meet them. It's not the cutesy, like, beginning stage of love, the honeymoon phase. They're so in love. But they are, you meet them. They are each other's ride or die. That is her number one teammate. No, don't worry. That's her teammate. So I feel like that's kind of people who know them from the pilot. They're just going to see I feel like they kind of have to learn from one another. I think Charlie definitely has to learn from Baggy. Uh, sort of the the way Baggy walks through the world, Charlie needs to like take a little bit of that with her. Um, but I do think that's why I love the relationship. Like this queer relationship at the center of an animated comedy is so special, particularly because it's just it's just treated with such like care and sort of like these are just two adult women who love and support one another and they're at that phase in the relationship that's like you're my girl case closed <laughs> i'd love to start with you daphne because your character does something that nobody expects and kills an angel <laughs> and that first up you know that first few episodes that we get to see so uh, what can you tell us about what that means for this season and like what that means for your character I can't tell you what it means for the season of the character, but I, I, I can tell you what it means for my character in that, um, you know, I kill for love. I kill to protect mine. You know, I'm a mom and I think that I'm, I'm a badass mom, you know, in real life too. I have to say that I'm not bragging, but um, my son will tell you that too. So, I mean, it's, it's just, just in right stepping, it's just very consistent with what Daphne would do if she were an animated character that sold weapons. I love it. I love that. And it changes the game for everything that fans have have seen so far of, you know, the pilot um, to be able to see that. I think people are going to be really excited to see what that could mean for, you know, the level. I hope so, of but I'm not playing with those fans, man. I come in peace. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and. And Jessica, you play one of the few angels that we get to see. Um, so what can you tell us about that? You know what I thought was interesting also is that I feel like the, the characters in hell are kind of nicer than some of the characters in heaven. So oh, what yeah. you about that? That's right. I mean, you know, what I, what I think is awesome is that this kind of flips what you would normally think of with heaven and hell kind of on its ass. It flips the entire thing, um, which is what I love about the series, is that the people you think would be these hellish creatures are supposed to be the gnarly, you know, weird, nobody wants to hang out with them type people, um, you know, which is not the case here. And so when you meet Loot, which um, season one is kind of the very, very, a uh, tiny setup to what happens with me in season two. And um, so we're slowly, you will slowly see things being set up with loot that kind of come to fruition in a large way in season two. And she's one of the angels that you see for one of those reasons. Um, when it comes to the arc of what happens between heaven and hell and you know, I, I didn't even realize the amount of badassery that I'm going into when it comes to season two. So it's a very, very cool. <laughs> um, it's, it is, it's really cool. You know, Daphne and I have been talking about the fact that we all got to be in person for the first time last night. And I'm talking, even meeting the creators, um, you know, 
from right. from music and lyrics and the you know animation everybody got to be there last night and talk to each other which is how i learned um what what is to come with loot which is so cool i get to fulfill my um villain era taylor swift fantasy <laughs> i love it i love it oh that's uh, she's a mastermind She's a mastermind, babe. Shall I play all of the T Swift song? I know, you know, I don't want to piss off the fandom, but you know, I'm I'm ready to play some karma. And now, Daphne, I wanted to ask you about your epic duet with Stephanie Beatrice, which I thought was so cool because you guys have worked on a musical before yeah, together history. in the Heights. So it's like full circle coming back together. What what can you tell us about singing that duet with her? Because it was created during a time when we were all isolated in our own rooms, putting, um, you know, we were. It wasn't a collective. And in fact, I didn't even know it was Stephanie. You know, I did not know it was Stephanie. That's cool. Um, I just show up, I do the damn thing, and I hope for the best um, because it takes so long. And because this project came along for me during the pandemic, I um, I just did it. And so many things like happen, they don't happen, they might happen, they take forever. So to show up last night with all of the people and like all of the, the collective put together. It was wonderful to see. Um, yeah, I mean, it was really, really wonderful. Stephanie, you did an awesome duet with Daphne Rubin Vega. Um, this is your second musical with her, but she was telling me she actually didn't realize who was going to be opposite her after she sang, you know? Um, so I was wondering kind of uh, what it's like being in another project alongside her and how you kind of balance that, like, you know, voicing opposite kind of, you don't know who's there yet, you know, like you kind of are doing your own thing. You haven't necessarily all gotten to see each other, um, like what that kind of dynamic is like. Well, to answer that part, I think a lot of... <clears throat> A lot of acting is trust. A lot of it is trusting your collaborators. It's trusting the actors that you're working with. And if you can't work with the actors, which many times voiceover work is solitary work, you trust the director. So you trust your creative team. You trust them to guide you through a story that they know very intimately at that point. They've been working on this for years at that point. You're coming into it really at the tail end and just bringing your abilities right at the tail end. So it's so much about it is trust. Um, mm -hmm. You just trust that they know where you're going and you follow them. I follow them blindly. Right. Um, I think I did know it was Daphne uh, I, at the time when I was recording. And so I was really cognizant about what her voice sounds like and how to duet with her in a way that was like there there are these two parallel stories in that duet but they're very different and and the emotion behind the thing that they're desiring in the song is really also kind of similar but different so vocally it was really fun to sing that song because I knew how we were going to be matched in the music and I I found it really interesting to make choices that I think come out and really like storytell through that song. For you, um, Erica, was it similar when you're kind of, especially because this is one of your first uh, like series voice acting projects, was it like kind of hard to voice against kind of nobody there? Or um, I guess like, what did you yeah. learn from that experience? Because we had such a great team guiding us, you walked in with just, they've just, Vivian just knows what this is. Like she knows this world, like the back of her hand. She is a world builder. Um, and so there's something that is such, it puts the actor view on set, on stage, or in a booth with no windows um, at ease when you are in good hands with somebody who knows where the story is going. So I felt trust that Viv knew what she wanted and was guiding along the way, along with our, our voice coach, Richard Horvitz. And the other element that I really liked was that you don't have time to think. You just have to go with your impulses. We only have so many hours to lay down an entire episode. And so the fun thing is that even though I didn't know how Steph was going to read a line or how Blake Roman, who plays Angel Dust, was going to read a line, I, if I had something, I thought, well, what's the widest spectrum that this piece of dialogue could be and can I try and hit as many of them as possible so that when they go into editing they have all these choices and that's fun for 
us as actors, because you don't have to choose and you get like, you can do as many different options as you want and like play with your imagination because it gives the creators more flexibility on the other end when they're putting it all together. So that was my, that's the thing I learned. And that to me is like the greatest joy of animation is stretching yourself so that they have all these options when they're putting it all together. You've been a part of so many great projects that I feel like represent the Latino experience so positively. And I wanted to know like what that kind of like means to you to be able to to represent for for all these generations. Well, what I love about the 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 series is that, you know, Vivian uh Vivian allowed us to, you know, say things like brutal, <laughs> you know, or just, you know, like not, um, you know, it, code switch is a word that is used a lot, but to me, because of who I am, it's like knowing different languages, you know, when we take on different dialects and stuff. So um, to be an overlord underground um, made, you know, created by, a bunch of people, but like, you know, the birth mom is is a Latina. It's wonderful. Well, I choose projects based on whether or not I like the story, you know. So some of the projects that I've chosen in my past are not about joy. Um, many of them are about pain and suffering and struggle. But I'm 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 trying to as I'm like as I get to be alive, I'm trying to pick projects that feel challenging interesting I feel like my soul is connected to them in some way I feel like I can give something that you know feels very real vulnerable honest um funny I like this project because it's fucking funny you know excuse my French but that was a big part of why I wanted to do this because it's like a ton of jokes good stupid silly jokes and I love comedy I think you know a lot of the stuff in the world is very serious it's, and this show can be very serious but it's also very very silly um so that is a joy to be able to perform and do stuff that makes me laugh that makes me laugh because i figure well if it makes me laugh it's probably pretty funny to a few other people and if it's not we don't want to be friends with them anyway. uh, yeah and I can't, I can't. <laughs> if i am uh, like cracking jokes and you're not laughing just, that, that's fine you're just not my people it's totally no, fine. Not. <laughs> just not funny no just kidding <laughs> Consider subscribing if you like my videos, and if you want to talk more TV and movies with me outside of the comments section, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash kmaldo. If you like this one, you can check out more of my videos right over here. See ya!